our speaker this afternoon, which is uh, Professor Alberti Aguilera from the University of Barcelona. Uh, he got his PhD back in uh, 87 <laughs> from another university, <laughs> the University of Barcelona. At that time, he was working in uh, stochastic processes, applied to many different things. In fact, before, before his PhD thesis, but he brought the nuclear reactors. He published three papers on nuclear, uh, of nuclear energy. He moved then as a postdoc to Leiden and uh, Sherbrooke in uh, Canada, in, uh, Leiden in the Netherlands and Sherbrooke in Canada, and then back to, to Barcelona. He uh, worked at that time in uh, self-organized criticality, among other things. And then he moved uh, very fast into the field of complex networks. He was one of the uh, persons working, or the researchers working in complex networks from the, uh, from the very beginning, and very successful, uh, well known for his huge contributions in communication in complex networks, social networks, signaling networks, synchronization in complex networks. He has a review paper on that, and it's <coughs> part of what he's going to tell us today, and also applications to. Um, to economic, uh, uh, to, uh, economic models. Uh, he has quite a number of well-known contributions, uh, perhaps uh, his work on uh, searchability in, uh, in networks, which has uh, relevance in many different fields, is one of his uh, most uh, quoted papers. And uh, also he was one of the first in the, in the world to make uh, first uh, an analysis of uh, a female uh, network, in fact, from the University of Tarragona, and uh, identified the, uh, the communities in the, uh, looking at the email uh, uh, exchange in that, uh, in that university. And I would also like uh, to say that he, he has played an important role in the, uh, in the Spanish community of, uh, of statistical physics, just to give you two examples. He once made, uh, he once made an analysis of the uh, network of uh, scientific collaborations in uh, statistical physics in, uh, in Spain, where most of us look at where we were in the, <laughs> in the network. And he was also the, uh, the uh, coordinator of the uh, first Spanish network on uh, econophysics, uh, econo social physics that lasted for, for a few years. So we're very glad to have you here. And we're uh, what else can I say? <laughs> Thank you very much, Maxi, for very, this very, very kind uh, introduction. I think I don't, I don't deserve so many uh, of, of these uh, things. Well, only the objective things, I think, are quite true. So that I got my PhD about uh, 23 years ago. <laughs> and uh, in all this time, I have been uh, well trying to, to work on, on these things mostly related with, uh, with statistical physics, this is, this is true. And uh, since uh, this time, in the last uh, 10 and uh, 12 years, in this, uh, I think it's quite uh, amusing uh, subject of uh, complex networks. And then, uh, so, but, but this talk today is uh, uh, not according to, to what Max has said, that these are among the, the subjects that were in this uh, review that we made uh, two years ago, because this is completely new. So, the, the work that I'm going to present is the work that I have been doing in collaboration with Naoya Fujiwara and, uh, and Jurgen Kuss at the University of Potsdam during the last year where I have spent my sabbatical year. So, and then it is among the first uh, places where, where we present this, uh, this work. So it's being, uh, it's, uh, let's say, in the process of being submitted in the next uh, X uh, weeks. So <laughs> <laughs> this is always uh, X tends to 1, but, but we, never, we never get it. And, uh, well, I hope that then you enjoy it, and this, uh, at least this, uh, this contribution. Well, this is uh, kind of a summary of my, uh, of, uh, of my talk. I will introduce uh, briefly which, uh, the context of this uh, work on, on mobile uh, oscillators and uh, complex networks and, and so. Then I will introduce the precise model that we are, that we are considering. Then uh, I will show you some of the numerical results, and then in these numerical results we find different characteristic behaviors, and then we can more or less uh, characterize uh, qualitatively some of these characters, characteristics, and then we can see uh, how these results uh, deviate from a well-known approximation in, uh, in the case of uh, 
of uh, non-fixed topologies. And then at the end, I will show you some approximation in kind of, of well, I could say, some kind of a semi-analytical approach uh, to this problem, and I will end up with some conclusions and future works of this. Uh, well, what about, uh, so the, this about the synchronization, and then uh, the, one of the, of the nice things about synchronization is that one of the, the we could say it's one of the paradigmatic examples of uh, emerging behavior. So synchronization has no meaning for individual components. So we have one single oscillator and then this single oscillator just makes some evolution in time. But then we need a whole population to say that this synchronization takes place. So, and in some sense, this synchronization appears as a collective behavior of the whole population. And then, of course, then we need some new characteristics to, to characterize, some new parameters to characterize these uh, these behaviors. And then synchronization, so there are many people in the audience, I'm sure probably very well familiar with this, we can find this phenomenon of synchronization in many, many different fields. For instance, we can find it in engineering, in the problem of consensus, which is problem of consensus is a little bit different from the problem of consensus in social science. Because here consensus means that we have a population of, of different units and then they try to do some kind of, of, of global computation of something. Uh, that's it. But uh, as a result, so the, the final state is that globally, in a synchronized way, they are able to get, let's say, a global answer to a given question. Then it's also, uh, you can find also some reference, for instance, in, in, in vehicle motion, of uh, that they, how they have to synchronize to go all together in the same direction, for instance. Then in nature, we have this uh, very well famous example of uh, flashing fireflies. I was very happy that Max has shown me the artificial fireflies uh, tree. <laughs> it was very, very nice. It's amazing to see how you can do this, uh, this let's say, real uh, experiments in, uh, in, in this. And then also at the end, it's uh, also even, even something which is uh, quite uh, common in, in society. So, so people together are also tending to do some things at unison. And among them is, for instance, that this example of the people clapping, so there is some, some results of this, that they are reported, so people at the end they clap together. And then this is also a very well famous example of the Millennium Bridge, that people in the day of the starting of the Millennium Bridge in London, then people were crossing the bridge, and then at the end they realized that they were exactly going synchronizing, and they had to stop because the, the bridge was in danger of being, uh, let's say, broken, structurally broken. So at the end it was, it was soft, but it was effect from complete, was effect of collective effect of all the people trying to cross the bridge at that time. <coughs> well, another part of the introduction is about this uh, complex networks. Actually we find, so I'm not trying to, to make an a, a exhaustive uh, overview of uh, complex networks, I can just say, well, we find complex networks everywhere. We find complex networks in, in science, we find complex networks in society, in technology, in engineering. We find so many examples of complex networks that at the end uh, it, it turns out that for many of the complex systems that we are used to study, there is always kind of a complex uh, pattern of, uh, of connectivity which is behind this uh, complex behavior. And then, usually what we can say is that a, a network is just a collection of nodes and links. And then a node can be anything, and a link is just a kind of relationship between, between the nodes. So, I'm just uh, passing over this definition. But, then in particular, when, when I try, as Maxi was saying, so when I try to look back at the early times of complex networks, I always wonder about this very nice paper of, uh, of uh, Steven Strogatz which is called Exploring Complex Networks. It was a paper in Nature in 2001, which said, uh, for me, it's a, it's a first attempt to do, it, to do a kind of review paper just after two years that the field of complex networks have started. So don't, just don't try to be exhaustive. So how, which kind of review can you write two years later? Well, but my point is the following, is that in 2001, Strogatz realized that complex networks were something much, much more than just topology. So here you see a list of the things that you can find in a network. These, these networks are inherently difficult to understand as the following list of possible complication illustrates. A structural complexity, the wiring diagram could be an integrated tunnel. This is what nowadays we understand by a complex network. We have network evolution. So this is the second point in this list, year 2001. 
and then say, well, the wiring diagram could change over time. On the World Wide Web, for instance, pages and links are created and lost every minute. So, at this time, Stovers realized that one of the main properties of the networks were that these connectivities are not static. And actually, these connectivities <coughs> which are not fixed in time is one of the main issues that we have now, and you will see later in my, in my presentation. Then you can see also many different things here. Dynamical complexity, the nodes themselves could be known in dynamical models. I think that most of these points have been considered in the literature, but probably this one, even if it's the second in this, in this list, uh, people have not been given the, let's say, the right attention. And then, uh, from my personal point of view, I think it's perhaps it's time to, to look at this and to see, make, try to make a kind of detailed analysis of these uh, of these topologies changing in time. And then, of course. Uh, the reason to, to work on this precise uh, subject comes from, this is uh, also what, uh, what uh, Maxi was saying, is that we were working in this uh, paper, in this uh, physics report paper, review paper in 2008, and then at, the, at that point we were looking at many different applications of synchronization in complex networks. And then one of the points was about wireless networks, and then, uh, so these wireless networks, networks that at some point are not fixed, are not, are not made, the connections are not made according to some, let's say, hard links, but the links are soft, like it's in a kind of, of a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth device, that this type of connectivity can be important on how a signal can propagate across the whole network. And then we realized that there were not a lot of literature on this subject, and then actually it was our starting point to say, well, we think that one of the, of the subjects to be analyzed is this of synchronization in complex non-fixed topologies. And then this was our main motivation. To, and there is also another reason is that, uh, in, uh, let's say, in, uh, when people have analyzed the dynamical properties of uh, complex networks, let's say that one of the main issues have been looking at the spectral characteristics of the graph. And then when I, when I talk about the spectral characteristics of the graph, what I have in mind is just looking at the distribution of eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix. And then this Laplacian matrix can be constructed for a given network. And then this pioneering work by Barahona and Pecora, they show that the synchronizability of the network was related just to the ratio between the smallest and the largest eigenvalue of the Laplacian matrix. Then the point is, okay, we have a complex network, we need to define, uh, we need to analyze non-fixed topologies, but we need some tools. And then our point is this. So is this approach still useful looking at the spectral properties of networks which now are not fixed in time? Then this is our main question, and then I will try to answer this question in the next transparencies. Okay. Then also we have uh, we find in nature or in society complex networks with uh, time-dependent topology. And then uh, here I just uh, list a few of these examples. In real systems, we have, uh, for instance, what happens in a social network. This is a paper by uh, GP, uh, JP Onella. Uh, appeared in PNAS in 2007, they analyzed a uh, social network of uh, users of cell phones and then they were recording all the calls among users of, of uh, cell phones and then of course this is a kind of connectivity which, in which you call someone and then this one call another one and so on. So in here, of course we can say, we can look at the system in a static way to say, well, there exists a link between this one and this one because they know each other's telephone number. We can say that this is just a static picture. But the dynamical picture says, well, you are calling this one and later on this one is calling that one and later on that one is calling this one. And then in this sense, it can be very interesting to trace exactly which is the time evolution of that the way in which these things appear. We also have uh, also some data from Brain Network, this is that Claude has known very well in, in some of his papers by these uh, these people. They, they show that when, when 
looking at the correlations between different parts of the brain, these correlations can be different at different instances of time. And then, of course, when you're recording, you are recording all these images, but then does it mean, so we have the same set of neurons, the same set of physical properties, but when you look at the brain, let's say, in a more global way, and, and you look, for instance, if you want to measure correlations, then you can realize that at different times, these correlations can be different uh, depending on, on the time. There are also other examples related, for instance, to human mobility. This uh, paper by, uh, by the group by uh, Barabasi, they were recording motion of people using cell phones because when, whenever you make a phone call from your cell phone, this, cell, this call is recorded. And then this call is recorded and your company knows where you were at the time of the call. And then, of course, if your uh, phone company can keep track of all this motion of the people, then of course they can have an idea on how people has been moving and then how people, even how people has been close to each other at a given time. Uh, are you already distinguishing between link and connectivity? In the sense that you can have a physical link, but it might not be connected at the time. Uh, yes, because this actually happens in the example of brain networks. Because in brain networks, it depends on the scale in which you are defining the, the, the network. If you, can, if you want to talk about the physical connection between the neurons, then you can make this link through the actions of it. Those are real links. Mm -hmm. But for instance, if you look at, connect, uh, like at correlation networks, then you have functions. And then, and then there is a functional relation between different parts of the brain. And then this, of course, can change. And then I will show you a particular example of this. So this movie that uh, I got from, um, from the group by uh, from Vittorio Loreto, this is the social semantics. I will show you just part of this uh, movie. This was recorded, uh, if I am wrong, please, uh, Vittorio, uh, correct me. That, uh, this was recorded in a, in a conference, and then people wearing uh, badges, and then these badges were emitting a radio signal then this radio signal was recorded in some in the room that you were attending, and what at the end you can have an idea on what people is doing and how people are linked. So here in this video you can even see the faces of the people going around. So uh, and then you can see how the people face each other. So and how here in this picture you can see how people communicate basically. And this is, and this is the point, so, and, okay, but, so this is different, so this is another part of the, of the story that uh, Vittorio can explain us, uh, but, but my point is that when we're in these cases, you can keep track of the, of, the, of the motion of the people, even attending this conference, and then you can see how the links are created as a function of time. And then, of course, you can, you can follow this, and then you can see if uh, there is some let's say, global behavior appearing in this system due to this behavior, for example. Well, then, uh, before, start, before presenting our, our model, I would like to, to show, to point to some approximation that, that people have been using in this, uh, the last uh, two, two years. And uh, you can see this uh, reference that the, the point is the following. Uh, this is what is called a fast switching approximation, which in our, in our terms of, uh, we are, of course, I am a physicist, and I know that some of you are physicists, I know all of you, but, <laughs> but in a physics sense, uh, what we know as the mean field is something which doesn't take into account which are the fluctuations. So when you look around, around you, you, you want to see just a global, an average picture of the real system. And then this type of approximation considers that the time scale of the agent's motion is much shorter than that of the own dynamics of the system. And then it means that every time that you look around, you see a completely different and average picture. Okay? Well, then these average scales are different. But what it means is that uh, the time scale, so the agents move in, in, a, in, in some way, but then uh, if this happens in a, in a very short uh, time scale, I would say it's 
true or is just the other way? Uh, I think it's just the other way. <laughs> then what happens is okay. Uh, when you move around and then you look at your neighbors, if you look around at your neighbors in a longer scale than the than your char characteristic dynamics, then what you see is a kind of an average page. Okay, we're going to more details. And then what these people are proposing is that you can replace the Laplacian matrix, which gives you all the information about the network structure that now depends in time with a time average. So that what you see in time is a kind of a time uh, of average over time. And then in this case, the matrix elements are just the probability that two edges are connected. So indeed, this is the average picture that some people have been looking at. But sometimes you can see that this approximation doesn't hold. And then in, in our case in which the synchronization is much faster than the motion of the edges, then we will see that we get an additional, uh, let's say, phenomena, is that a, a, a different phenomena which we call this, this local synchronization of a special clusters. Okay, well, this is a model that we have in mind in order to explain this, this uh, let's say, general behavior. The point is that now what we have is we have uh, agents in a moving uh, randomly on a two-dimensional plane uh, of uh, size uh, L. Okay, so we have agents here moving in a two-dimensional plane of uh, size uh, L, and then we just uh, draw here a link between two agents if they are at a distance shorter than, than some threshold. So this is the type of, of oscillator dynamics that we are trying to implement. So this is the evolution of the phase of oscillator I, which uh, this is the usual term. So and then, but this oscillator, this is a kind of a well-known in physics Kuramoto model, in which you interact with some neighbors only if these neighbors are at a distance smaller than the The point to consider this approximation is that all of us, we are wearing, we are holding these cell phones, and then for a cell phone, if you have a Bluetooth connectivity, for instance, we were discussing before, then this Bluetooth connectivity has a very short range, and then it means that when you are moving around, you are only, you will be only connected to these people that are within the range or the device that you are having. So this is the way in which we construct this network. Of course, this network now is not, is not fixed because the agents can move randomly on this plane. The colors are just a code that we use for the faces. Then it, it means that the, so different colors stand for different faces of the oscillators. Okay? Then uh, this is uh, the characteristics. These oscillators does not have natural frequency. All no, that is true. That all of them have exact. They are identical oscillators, and they all have the same. The same uh, because in this case you are interested on how because then the system is able to reach a completely synchronized system. Yeah. If you don't use uh, identical oscillators, then it's not uh, it's, it's not a guarantee that the final state is completely similar. Of course, we can introduce and consider non-identical oscillators, but we are starting with the most uh, simple modeling, which is now all oscillators are identical. And then we don't need to put any frequency yes, because yes, 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 all of them are resetting to frequency which is equal to zero. Okay? Then, so it's very important because here we have this instantaneous topology. You can see here that these links are drawn uh, only between edges that are close enough. <coughs> and then, for the coupling state, you do not divide by one over n, or this that included in sigma. Uh, do this uh, means that when there is a large number of uh, people, the coupling strength could be very large? Well, this is, this is all we, we all usually face this, this discussion. Uh, you can divide by n. It doesn't matter. It just well, in, in this case, because probably sigma is always used to a huge number of people in that. That's it. I, I know, I know because I have always this discussion with Conrad that he always has in mind. Oh, but if, what happens if you have an infinite population? <laughs> so, 
then when you have an infinite population, this is not the case. So in our case, we have a finite number of oscillators and then it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And also the point is that, okay, if you look at uh, some people working in Kuramoto models in, for complex networks, some people divide, for instance, by the degree yeah. or, by, or by the average yeah. degree. But then in this case, since the degree is uh, homogeneous, then it doesn't make any difference. Okay? Homogeneous? Uh, changes with time, of course, but, but, uh, but the fluctuations of the degree distribution is very small. Maybe. What? Why do you write this in a discrete form? I mean, this is nothing but a diffusion process? No, no, that's true. Uh, which, uh, what do you mean? Uh, this one. This one is kind of a diffusion process. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But not the, not the, only, one, the only one should be, it's discrete. Here, why, that's the question. Why don't you write this in a, in a continuous? The other one. Both, both of them. Uh, of course, this one you can you can uh, make it uh, in a continuous because this is the way in which uh, the agents move. Okay, look at the next picture. Uh, okay, look at this. So, b squared tau m is the average distance that uh, tau m is the what we call the persistent time, the time that each agent agent moves in a straight line. Then b squared tau m is the length of, of this, let's say, microscopic path, okay? But the point is that this tau m, which is the characteristic time of the motion, is different from tau p, which is the characteristic time of the update of the phases. Yes, yes we, have we have considered these two different scales, because in principle they are two different phenomena. You can also incorporate those into the continuum description. Which one? Oh, differential equation? Not, not in this one, in the way that we have defined it, uh, look uh, that... Oh, differential equation with, an, with the time scale, which is different. But in... Uh, well, we can... Because we were considering this model that... Uh, the point that you mentioned is that if here you incorporate this tau p dependence, then it's more like a continuous version. But but we, we were trying to, actually, we were working at the beginning with these two different models. One with tau p here in front and the other without the tau p. But at the end, we, we prefer to work with this, just a matter of convenience. Tau m is delta t? Uh, no, delta t is uh, smaller than tau n because then it's what, what it means is that is that the time that you are, you have you are moving in a straight line is uh, tau n and delta t then is smaller so it means that you are making so you change the angle the orientation of uh, of uh, of the motion at every uh, discrete at every let's say time interval tau n okay so then this tau m is the characteristic time for the motion, and then tau p is the characteristic time for the updates of the phases. In principle, they are, they are different. So then we will see at the end which is the, the main significance of these of this parameters. Okay? So look that uh, when you look at this picture, you can see that one of the main uh, problems that we have is that uh, this, this looks like a problem of continuum, per continuum perforation. You look at these problems, let's say, 20 years ago, which you are placing this on a plane, and then you look at which is the critical density for having problem of, of percolation. It's like a classical percolation. But in our case, it's even more complicated because we have these that are not fixed that can move. So we have a problem of this that can move here and that can cross the border of continuous percolation and, and, and let's say above or below this threshold of continuous percolation. And then it, it makes that, uh, that we expect in principle some qualitative behavior from a region in which the network is very sparse to another situation in which the network is more dense in the sense that here you see clusters of different sizes, but if you increase the distance, the range of the device, then you can get clusters which are larger. And then let me show okay, this simulation. So this is exactly, this is exactly the same system. And then, uh, okay, let's run. And now I increase 
the range of the devices. Okay? You see? Then when you have the range of the devices, then these, dev these agents are connected in within a distance which is 53 units. And then you, what you can see, what you, what you expect here is that you get a kind of a local synchronous. But they don't move. No, they don't move now, but they can move. Okay? They can move, and then you see that if they don't move a lot, you still have a kind of a local synchronization, and then eventually some of them can join other clusters, and then you can see that finally the system, even if it's never, it never, it has a completely connected component, the system ends up in a completely synchronized state. But, but I didn't see the synchronization before. When you have velocity going to zero, Excuse me? Okay. Okay. Yes. They will never synchronize. They no, will no, never. no, 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 but before, now they are synchronized within a cluster. No, they only, within a cluster they are always synchronized. No, no, well, I didn't see that before. <laughs> you start synchronizing, they not Yeah, but then you see that if you increase, uh, now if no. you increase the range, then at the end you, get, you can get a completely connected component, and then in this case, it looks that it's easier. No, no, but, but also a smaller range. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not over. Oh. They were not synchronized. Okay. So what do you want to do? Start? Run. 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 No, range only is more range. Okay. Than okay. One, two, three, four. Different from zero. And it's got these small clusters. Okay. And that's okay. I know you look within each cluster, they are not synchronized. But they will synchronize at the end. But not, they are not. No. They waste some time. So that's because the, that's because the intensity of the, of the strength is not enough. As we no, 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 no. At the end, at the end, they will synchronize. It's a transient. Yeah, it's a transient. No, I think that. that well, no, because because the oscillators are identical. Ah, they are identical. Yeah, 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 Synchronized, but it takes a long time in, the, in this case. But it, it, but it does. Sorry, Albert. There's no feedback on the movement. So no. The transition is not. Feedback. No, that's not. That's so no, the, the two conditions are independent. So at each time, a step, we update the phases and we update the relation, the relation of the motors. Okay. So if you increase very much the connectivity and the velocity, then you can get something which is really crazy. Okay? But this is not uh, real. But then the point is that uh, what, what happens that at the end, even if you see here, it's not a connected component, but they tend asymptotically to a synchronized state. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. Okay? Actually, here you have this recording. And because here we have three different cases. Here is a very dense network, and you will see that they will synchronize, of course. This is very dense, but then you can see that locally, there is a, a local degree of synchronization. And then this local degree of synchronization, at the end, makes the whole system is completely synchronized. And then you will see the other case, this one in which here, the motion is, uh, you can see here, local synchronization, local synchronization, and then at the end the system develops again in a completely global synchronization. But there exists, in a, let's say, in a shorter time scale, a case in which synchronization is local. But then, in this case, uh, the last one, here, when the motion is very, very random, and then you don't have time to, you here, you don't see any local synchronization. But what do, you, what do you expect to get at the end, even if there is no local synchronization where the jumps are very long, then at the end you also get a system which is completely synchronized. So what we see is that there are different mechanisms to get complete synchronization in these three cases. Here it's warranty because of the, of the connectivity. 
Here, because we have very slow motion, we have local synchronization, and then the local synchronization develops into global synchronization. And here, there is no local synchronization, and global synchronization appears very much easy. Okay, then, according to this, uh, you, I hope that now you uh, more or less have understood the model, and now I'm going to show you how we are going to characterize this, mo this, this model. The only thing that we are looking now is how the faces approach each other asymptotically. But because they are identical oscillators, what we know is that at the end, if we wait long enough time, the system will be completely synchronized. And then you can see here, you have a transient because it's a kind of adjustment of, uh, of initial phases. But at the end, you see here, it's in a log linear uh, plot. You can see that asymptotically, this decays as a straight line. So it means that the phase difference decays exponentially. And then according to this exponential decay, we can define just the slope of this decay as a characteristic of the system. And this is what we define as the characteristic time, the slope of this decay. Okay? Uh, and then we have a different measure, which is that related to efficiency. Because efficiency is very, in the way that we define it here, is very important because when you are looking at the synchronization of, of devices, there are two things which are important. One is that you want your system to be synchronized fast, so that the time is, is low. But at the same time, you want that this process of synchronization is made with very few signal exchange. Because every time that you send a signal to your neighbors, you are holding a device which has batteries. And then, according to this, you prefer to do this process just preserving the, let's say, the life of your battery. Okay? Then it means that we have these two characteristics which can be important at the same time. The real time, so how it decays, and then this efficiency measured as a time of signals required to get synchronization. Okay, this is just a, a picture which shows this is the behavior for the Kuramoto model. So the interaction is made in terms of the sinus of the phase difference. And here is the same simulation, but instead of the, using the sinus, using just the phase difference, so the linear case. And then you can see that in the linear case, only the transient you can see that are different here in this. And then it means that when you have overcome this transient, the linear approximation is very good for the Kuramoto model. And then you can see here, this is a straight line plot with the linear approximation. And then you can see that, the, let's say, that the asymptotic behavior of the uh, original model of this Kuramoto model of the sinus of the phase difference can be very well explained by the behavior of the linear system. Well, that means that if you adapt it very fast, they say that the rough phases and then not very fast, not very fast. You need this escape, but, but depending on the interaction, because this depends on the, on the time, the time between consecutive signals. So if you update very fast, then your system synchronizes very fast. And then it means that the transient is also very fast. Okay? And then? Okay, then uh, before going into, into the results, Remember, at the beginning, I was talking about this fast switching approximation. Then this is a very uh, nice approximation, which uses the fact that you can approximate. That we can approximate this evolution by the linear equation. Then in the linear equations, we have the uh, Laplacian matrix here. And then we know how to solve this equation in an exact way. And we will use it later. But now, only for this fast switching approximation, now it means that we are replacing this, uh, this Laplacian matrix that depends on time by an average matrix. So here, if we replace this Laplacian matrix by an average matrix, it means that you are one of these agents. And then you don't look at every time step which are your neighbors, but then you look after enough number of time steps, which is on average what you see from your neighbors. And then on average, if you wait for a long enough time on average, you see 
from all your neighbors exactly with the same probability. And this probability is given by this. And this is very simple algebraic calculation to see. The probability of two nodes to be connected is just classical probability theory. Pi d squared divided by L squared. Probability that when you throw an agent into onto the plane that you are into the range of any of the agents that are already in the plane. Then, the eigenvalue of this Laplacian matrix are this matrix, this Laplacian matrix now is the generate, all the eigenvalues are identical, and all the eigenvalues are equal to this value. So, now, we have a very nice result. So, we have a very nice, very simple approximation, which gives us how we expect this system to behave. This is the time that we expect for the system, that for the, the, the time that the system needs to get synchronized. Is this true? Well, not completely. Here we show the result of some simulations under different conditions. Okay. What we have here, this uh, solid line is the fast switching approximation. And then we have here pictures for different values of tau p. What is tau p? Remember that tau p <laughs> is the time interval between two consecutive updates of the phases. So look here. If tau p is very large, so your agents have been moving onto the plane, and then after 10 time steps, where is your expected position? There is no memory about the position that you had. 10 time steps before. So then what happens now is that when tau p is large enough, at every time that you update your faces, you see a completely random neighborhood. Okay? This is what you expect. Then this is the reason for which this mean field approximation works in this case. Because what you see around is just a kind of average over all the different neighborhoods that you can have over time. But what happens when tau p is getting smaller and smaller, then the fast switching approximation doesn't hold anywhere. But we still have a case in which even when tau p is very small, that tau p is very small, and d is very small, it means that if d is very small, it means that the network is very sparse, that just two edges have a very, very low probability to meet and then they can meet for a given time, but they will not meet after, only after let's say, a long time of time steps. Okay, but then here it means that in this area, so we expect this fast switching approximation also to. But what happens here? So here you can see a very long deviation of this behavior. What happens here is that, okay, for this fast switching approximation, this region two is this region where I was showing you that movie, in which we call it this multi-cluster local synchronization. It means that, remember that picture, that the motion is very low. And then you have very, very low motion, and then the clusters are able to synchronize locally before they break apart, okay? And then in this area, that's the reason for which this fast switching approximation doesn't work. But when we go into this uh, uh, region here, this tree is what we call this single cluster local synchronization. Single cluster means that we are going through the percolation threshold. And then what we expect in this case is just a kind of a static continuum percolation problem. The density of the disk is high enough to guarantee that th there is a complete cluster in the system. Just percolation, static percolation problem. And here in this area, what we can see is that it fits very well to this line. And this line, I will show you later, to what corresponds. And finally, we, we get into <coughs> another area here, which where you see this fast switching approximation changes the slope, which is the case in which you have a complete graph. So when D is large enough, when the range is large enough, you have all your nodes connected to the other, and then any approximation is good in this case. Okay? Something unclear, so we don't do as. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. <laughs>
No, yes, one, uh, here there are two, two approximations, well, three, but uh, the two I, I follow is the, the listening field light, and also the replace, replacing the sinus by a linear field. Yes. Is this playing a different role in different ranges? Or do you no, 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 no. The, the approximation, when we, we, I say that this approximation of the sinus of the phase difference, I replace it by the, by the phase difference. Uh, I did it because then I want to construct the Laplace. But then I show you in the in previously that this approximation always works. Not always. In, range. in all the ranges, all the cases. Because if you remove the transient, okay, because in the transient, in any case, if you if you have this Kuramoto model and then your uh, initial phases are close enough, because usually you take it in on the in this range from 0 to 2 pi, but if you take them very close, then you can avoid this range and then they are equal. But for us, what is important is not the time that the system needs, but how to, de how to describe the system according to this exponential decay. And then according to this exponential decay is the same for the Kuramoto model than for the linear model. Then, this, once you make this approximation, the fast switching approximation is the one that takes, that you replace the Laplacian by the average Laplacian. That's it. And then we can see that in the case in which tau p is very large, then this fast switching approximation is very good. Okay? But I was just wondering, when you say complete graph, you mean actually a single connected component? No, no. A no, a single connected component is here, when you are in the percolation threshold. Because then, here... Cluster and clusters. Okay. So you, have, you, have, you have a kind of infinite cluster. But a complete graph, it means that D is about the size of the, of the system. And then it means ah, okay. that every pair, so okay. complete graph means that every, every node is connected to every other node. Okay. Well, then if you see the characteristics in these uh, different regions, we have been discussing about uh, some slides before, then we get this, uh, in this region one, in which we have global synchronization, this is just four snapshots of the movie I was showing, here, there is no trace, so you can see that local synchronization doesn't appear because you see connection to nodes that have very different phases, okay? And here in this case is where fast switching approximation is good. But in this other case, in which we have local synchronization of multiple clusters, you see here the appearance of this local synchronization how this local synchronization makes a cluster grow, synchronized clusters grow in time. But look, I say synchronized cluster, but they are not connected, but they have exactly the same color. Because what you get here is that they can also break. But once they are synchronized, they can break, and they can, of course, they can merge all the clusters. And the way in which the different cl the clusters communicate to other clusters are because of the motion. Because in this case, motion is the key point to get global synchronization. Okay, and then this is the, the single cluster in which here it's very, it's very simple than this was. Well, in this case, what happens is that here, the motion is not even necessary. The system will synchronize by itself. And then here, actually, this, uh, the dotted line that I was plotting was just the average of the second smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian. So we look at the Laplacian at every time step, we measure the second smallest eigenvalue, then we look at the average of the second smallest eigenvalue over time, and then in this way we compute the, uh, this point, okay? Actually, you can see that here in this area, so this uh, average of the second and smallest second value is very important. This is the first key in which we get that now, again, looking at the spectral properties of the system is very important. Okay, okay. then uh, I... I'm getting over time, very short. Uh, then here what I'm showing is a more complete picture in which what we do is dividing the real time measuring the simulations by this fast switching approach, the time that you get from the fast switching approximation. 
Then what we get here is that there is some area in which when tau p is large enough that fast switching approximation is good. And here there is an area in which again fast switching approximation is good, but here in this area fast switching approximation is not good. And, then, and, the, and the change is by a couple of orders of magnitude. So it is important to see that here in this area, so why this fast switching approximation doesn't hold, and if we are able to find now if this approximation is not good, which can be the behavior of the system. And what we propose is a kind of, of, uh, of uh, let's say, a qualitative picture of this transition looking at two characteristics of the clusters. Remember that I was talking about synchronized clusters, local synchronization. I here, here I have two numbers. So this is the number of time steps that the, a cluster needs to synchronize. This is 1 over sigma, so it's uh, inversely proportional to the interaction strength, and it's inversely proportional to the second smallest eigenvalue of the cluster. And this, in principle, depends on D. In a, not, not in a very in a simple way. We have no idea on how it depends on D. Okay? But what makes sense is to assume that this second smallest eigenvalue is an increasing function of E. But on the other hand, what we have, we can also measure which is the number of steps of an agent to leave a cluster. And since these agents are doing this kind of diffusive work, and this is the characteristic size of the cluster, so this number measures which is the number of time steps that we need to leave the cluster. So if we compare these two number of time steps, we can understand that, so if we compare these two things, this f of d is a product of two increasing functions of d. No way, no, no idea on how precisely they are, but it's an increasing function of d. And we have this behavior on sigma and this behavior on tau p. What does it mean? If we fix d, if we fix d, we expect always a transition from when tau p is large enough, the behavior is dominated by the global synchronization. And when tau p is low enough, the transition is, the, 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 let's say, the mechanism that dominates is the global, it's the local synchronization. So this is fast switching approximation, global, synchronis, uh, global synchronization is set. Uh, and here is, we have local synchronization and fast switching is not good. And then this can be explained just by this ratio and to see how I, I'm, I'm just saying, in a short, in a quite qualitative way, we can explain how this transition is produced. Okay? And of course, looking at this area, there is some way to, let's say, uh, empirically find in which way this function f depends on it. But we didn't try to look at this. Okay? Okay, I have to wait, avoid. I still have a lot of information. I, okay. I will skip this one. But uh, what we, we have made one step further. And then our step further is trying to understand <laughs> from a spectral point of view these behaviors that I just described quite a what we we have been we have seen is that this uh, here we have this set of uh, linearized equations we have this Laplacian matrix and then remember that the fast switching approximation was to consider that this Laplacian matrix can be replaced by an average over time. Okay. What we want to do is to keep this time dependence of the Laplacian matrix. Okay. But then we can solve this equation. We can use normal modes. We can use very, uh, which are tools in physics, which are very common. So I can talk about eigenvalues, eigenmodes, and then I can look at the evolution of the eigenmodes. And actually, it's the evolution of the <coughs> eigenmodes that gives me the characteristic time for the, the behavior of the system. And then you can solve this equation exactly, and then you can introduce this U R the matrices of the transformation which are different at different time steps. And then, and this lambda are the eigenvalues of the Laplacian matrix at different time steps. Okay? And then we can write the evolution of the eigenmodes 
as a kind of convolution of something which depends on the agent mobility and something which depends specifically on the oscillatory mechanics. Okay? Then, finally, we can say, we can, we can plot this in a, let's say, uh, in this way, and then we can, what we, this equation means is that the agent mode at some time can be written as a matrix times the agent modes at initial times. And all the information of the dynamics is here, in this transformation. This is a matrix, a matrix that relates the eigenvalues at original times and the eigenvalues at later times. Okay, if you look at this matrix, and then you look at this matrix and diagonalize it, and then the eigenvalues of this product of matrices will give you what will give that characteristic time of the system. And then here in this figure, I have plot for the solid symbols the time, the characteristic time measured from the simulations. And here, for the open symbols, I have the time is measured as the second smallest eigenvalue of this pro of the product of this analysis. So then, this you can see that this behavior is exactly the same. Then you can understand that this matrix has all the information about the dynamical properties of the system. And then it is the product of these matrices that can be used not only for synchronization dynamics, but for any type of dynamics that you are implementing in the system, which can be quite useful. Okay? Then one of the nice points here is that from this equation, we can go into the different regions that we were explaining in some descriptive way. For instance, for the fast switching approximation, what we have here is the product of these eigenvalues in this way, and then of course this is the exponential of n times. n is the number of time steps of the exponential of, because here we have this product, and then this is the product of the matrices at different time steps. So, then this average here is the average over different time steps of the connectivity of the matrix. And then that's the reason for which, in this case, we can write this expression in terms of this is the average of the eigenvalues, and then in this case, this gives rise to the fast switching approximation. So we can derive the fast switching approximation from the matrix of the transformation of the eigenmodes. Next step is that what happens when we have multiple cluster local synchronization? No way. So in this case, the fast switching approximation doesn't work, and then uh, we have to make a discussion, and then we are still working on this, we have to make a discussion on how the different modes evolve into the system. Actually, because here in this case of local, then all the information is in the how the non-zero modes decay. The zero modes correspond to the clusters. Then the zero modes, let's say, are very fast. But the non-zero modes are the modes that evolve from clusters of different sizes in time. So if the, the non-zero modes give you a transition from one cluster to other clusters in time. And then what we can have an idea is that in this case, this ratio, tau divided by tau p, scales with the probability that after one time step, two neighbors, let's say two agents, can be connected. But look, that this is very, very different to the fast switching approximation because in this case, every time that we have our wireless device and then we look around, so we have our neighbors. But if, I, if tau p is very small, in the next time step, I see exactly the same. And the next time step, I see, well, I see just very small changes. But then, in, for this case, it is the decay of the non-zero modes which is responsible for the synchronization. And then it is the reason for which now, in this area here, when tau p is very small, then it doesn't depend on tau p or it doesn't depend on d. There is a kind of saturation. And then the only dependence in this area is on the motion of the system. Because now the motion of the system plays a crucial role. Okay? And then finally, when we have this local synchronization single cluster, 
whenever this cluster is now test, this has a giant component, uh, and then in this case we can see at every time step, so the behavior of the matrix is dominated by the smallest eigenvalue, but every time step is governed by lambda 2. Then in this case, it makes sense that this line gives you a nice agreement because it's just the average of the second smallest eigenvalue. The average of the second smallest eigenvalue is different from the average of the, all the eigenvalues. The average of all the eigenvalues is the fast switching approximation. The average of the second smallest eigenvalue is this line here. And actually you can see that the behavior can be understood as a kind of upper bound and lower bound of this let's say, qualitative motions. Okay, well, I'm finishing. And then, so, summarizing that I have shown this uh, model of uh, synchronization, and then we see there is a complicated, complex interplay between the oscillator dynamics, the motion of the agents, and instantaneous network topology. Then we can see that this fast switching approximation works sometimes, sometimes doesn't work. And, well, I didn't show this optimal region because I skipped the transparencies. And then but we have proposed this novel solution in terms of the instantaneous spectrum of the Laplacian matrix. And then that this, uh, this Laplacian matrix can give you uh, a very well approximated idea of the different asymptotic behaviors in this system. Okay, and then, of course, I think that uh, this can be understood as a first step in a more complex uh, frameworks in which, of course, uh, we have to take into account which is the critical behavior very, very close to the critical percolation pressure because we didn't, we didn't take care into account of this. So we can change the type of the, of the agent motion, we can look at different dynamics, and then at the end we can look at different applications to real-world networks were, for instance, wearing these mobile devices, so looking at the people from like, this live semantic, asking for data, say, okay, you can give us which is a pattern of, of, uh, of motion of the people, and then to see how this applies, how they, this real motion of the people can be different from just uh, random words I would have been using in this case. Okay, and that's all, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Time for questions, comments, criticism, suggestions. Criticism. <laughs> Where are the oscillators? <laughs> we are not using anywhere that those are oscillators. Yes. Uh, they, they, are, they are things which tend to be close to each other. That's it. No, not close. They, 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 wait, wait, some wait. variable of things which tend to be close to each other. No, no. No, no. no look. Uh, they move, okay? No, they move on the plane. And then, every time that they move, they look around. If you have... Uh, so, you look at I. So, if J is within a distance smaller than the range of your device, then you see him, okay? And then you interact with him. Yeah. That's it. That means that you make the, the faces closer. Yeah. You make they them? Are, they are not oscillators. They, yeah. they are things that look around and make to, uh, try to be close to the neighbor. That's it. Okay, because we because we, I have reset the frequency to zero. Why, why, why the sign? Why the sign? Because uh, the sign has been. Of no. course, we, we you can replace it by some type of more complicated dynamics. I I complicated linear Yeah, yeah. You can use. The, the language that okay, the, the language you have to use is oscillators. I, I see that you are not using this for anything. Oh, okay. And, okay. And, and in practice. Okay. I think this is better because a Bluetooth uh, phone is not using when you communicate using or when you are not using that they are oscillators. No, no, no. I, I, I completely agree with you because the, how, the, the point is that you are using these Bluetooth devices for what? Not for synchronizing, of course, because you, your, your cell phone synchronizes with a satellite or with, with, the, with the tower. But the point is that this, this is a framework and then this framework can be used for instance and how in a population of people having these Bluetooth devices, how for instance a virus can spread. A virus can spread this, this because the dynamics can be related to this type of behavior. You can just look at the spectral properties of the matrices at every time step and then from this you can, in some sense, you can try to forecast which is the time that the system, this virus for instance, will try to so I think this is a framework excellent. Uh, if what matters in the dynamics is the, the interactions. But the, 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 those, those 
objects have to know internal dynamics. You, you uh, delete the interaction. No, no, no. There is no dynamics at all. No, of course. But 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 what do you? Okay. Then what is your opinion if I put here uh, frequency omega i and it's the same for all of them? No, if it's the same. It's the, the okay. Same. But if, if I put a different, uh, let's say, a distribution of frequencies, I can put the distribution of frequencies which is, let's say, I can put the distribution of frequencies which is, uh, bro uh, let's say, is uh, narrow enough that according to the interaction that they have to warranty that the system will finally synchronize. But you know very well that in this case you, you, it's not, uh, you don't have to look at the phase synchronization but you have to look at frequency synchronization. So the, the, the way in which we define the characteristic time is not the good one. So you have to look at frequencies more than the phases. But I think that this, this can be... This, can, this is, of course, those, this is a, a, among the next steps to be, to be done in this way. What's the difference between your model and the one by Fasca and Italian PRM in 2008? No, 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 it's not similar at all. Because they, they, they look at some motion, but they look at different, uh, they look at different interaction. And what they made is from the beginning, they, they made this fast switching approximation. So all the results that they get are only valid in the case in which the agents move very fast. Here we present a more general frame. But, but they, they, they have different... So actually what they have, uh, they, they look at... Uh, uh, they look at kind of the chaotic oscillators and then, of course, when you look at this type of system, then all the information is in the metrics, in the interaction metrics. And then the interaction metrics is all of Russian. And they say, well, now I'm going to replace this Laplacian that appears in this interaction term by the average Laplacian. And actually, they are not the first in using this approximation. There is a paper by uh, Benedict <coughs> and others in which they propose this fast switching approximation. So, well, the fast switching approximation, in this case, it's just uh, some wires, that some, some, some links that can appear or disappear. So the nodes are fixed. And then the links can be active or inactive at some, at some times. And then if they show that if you do it fast enough, then the fast switching approximation is good. But they don't say what happens when the, the fast switching approximation doesn't work. Okay, I think we we do it. I mean, they're very quick. I'm just wondering about this segregation phenomenon because I mean you're not constraining the dynamics uh, uh, on the synchronization. I'm just wondering whether I mean you're thinking about going in these directions or are you aware of I mean, any work in this direction? So I mean no. because uh, it's more or less I mean the equivalent of a random work in a random environment. Or, yeah. or if you wish, I mean a random active random work. I mean mm -hmm. shaping I mean the environment yeah. the potential that uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that would be interesting because I mean you could look at effects like segregation, so you yeah. have synchronization in different Communities, so a different, <coughs> different, different community. Because I remember there was a paper by Marcini in PNS a few years ago in which they looked at something very, very similar, but they tried to allow people to leave with their cluster. Yeah, it's, it's perhaps a paper with uh, Fernando, Fernando Vega? Yes. Yes, in, in this case they have, they have kind of a, let's say, dynamical network, but this is based on some game theoretical. Uh, it was very, very simple actually because it was based on some harmonizing model. Yes, yeah. yeah, but this, but, but uh, I don't remember that exactly, but I would say that in this case, of course, you can, you can change the connectivity in, uh, in, in your system, but it's not the same type of, of approach that we propose here because in, in their case, so there is no dynamics on the net, on the nodes. I think that, that the agents make decisions about their connectivity, but there is no internal dynamics. I also mean that here, that here, on the contrary, there is no feedback from the state of the No, no, that's, that's not. The no, that's there right. is no that's right. And I get this, this is a very interesting idea. So we were thinking, of course, of course, because this can be a kind of, of a landscape in which people can tend to move in, in some places. What we have in mind actually is the result in the, if you read the paper by, by Balabasi, what they show there is that people don't move in a, in a circular shape that they have this kind of elongated shape. Mm -hmm. And then, if we want to make these random walls, for instance, to move uh, according to some preferred directions, and then you make some of this uh, soil in which you can move more preferentially, and then, of course, you can change the directions, 
And then, I don't know. So I would like to know exactly what happens. What changes if I have a random word like this one in which I have no memory, have no preferred direction, have nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I compare it with a random word with the same average properties, but with a different distribution of steps, for instance. Mm -hmm. This is one of the directions we want, we want, we want to, to, let's say, to, to look because at. Because it would also be interesting, I guess, uh, looking at different tasks. Because for instance, now the task is synchronization. So okay. the task is looking for an object. Yeah, it, it can be. So you can get different, different dimensions. Yeah. You cannot see the object. You, you can only gather the information from other people that may be new from other people that there is something. Okay. Yeah, and at the end, you also want to get a kind of a global of course. Of response. Of course. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, I discourage consensus is going to be seen. Okay, I think we we should uh, uh, finish here and uh, before uh, thanking Albert for his talk and uh, and discussions, um, just let me know that uh, we we also have here with us uh, Vittorio Loreto from the University of Rome, and just after the coffee we have uh, a meeting of the uh, team of people interested in social physics, in which he's going to tell us a little bit his current research and if anyone else is uh, interested is, uh, uh, <coughs> we will be meeting um, after just after coffee. Okay? So thanks a lot.